In this video, we're going to talk about voltage multipliers, a circuit that can increase the voltage of the input by some multiple. So in this example, what we have is a half wave voltage doubler. We have an AC signal at the input, and we're going to get a DC signal at the output. We have two capacitors, which we'll call C1 and C2 and we have two diodes, D1 and D2. And the resistor is the load resistor. Now, let's talk about how this circuit works. This circuit can increase the voltage. So let's say the voltage of the input is 10. The voltage of the output, if you don't take into account the voltage drop at the diodes, will be approximately 20 volts. However, there's a trade-off. This circuit doesn't increase the energy of the system. If you increase the voltage, the current will decrease. So at 100% efficiency, let's say the current was 10 amps. The maximum current that you can get at the output will be 5 amps, such that the power transferred is 100 watts. Power is voltage times current. So whenever a circuit increases the voltage without applying any input energy to the circuit, the current is going to decrease because we don't have any external power sources that's going to increase the voltage. The voltage is being increased by passive elements, not by any active element. So as the voltage goes up, the current goes down. Now let's talk about how this circuit increases the voltage. And to do that, let's briefly review batteries. Let's say if we have two batteries connected in series, Let's say the first one is a 10 volt battery and the second one is a 25 volt battery. What is the output voltage across those two batteries? And now what's gonna happen if we switch the polarity of the 10 volt battery? What will be the output now? So feel free to pause the video and uh, think about that for a moment. Whenever you connect the negative terminal of one battery to the positive terminal of the other battery, the voltages add up. So the total voltage across these two batteries will be 35. Now for the other one, the two negative terminals are facing each other. So these batteries, they oppose each other. This one is the stronger one, so it's gonna win out. The total voltage across these two batteries will be 15 volts. It's 25 minus 10. So it's important to understand that whenever you have two batteries or two elements with a voltage across it, if you have the positive side of one element attached to the negative side of the other element, the voltage will add up. It's going to increase. And that's going to happen in this circuit. During the negative half cycle of the AC signal, the bottom will be positive, the top part will be negative. So conventional current will flow from the positive portion of the AC uh, signal through D1, because D1 is going to be forward bias, so D1 is on, and it's going to flow back to the negative terminal through C1. Now it really doesn't flow through C1, but what's really happening is C1 is being charged by the negative half cycle of the sine wave. Now, this current won't be able to flow through C2 because D2 will be in reverse bias mode so that diode is off during the negative half cycle. Conventional current won't flow this way. Now keep in mind conventional current and the actual flow of electrons are opposite so in this circuit electrons are actually flowing in this direction but many textbooks use the direction of conventional current so we're going to go with that in this video. But just remember, electrons actually flow in the opposite direction. So that's it for the first half cycle. That is the negative cycle. So once C1 has been charged, this is now going to be positive and this is going to be negative. Now let's say that this sine wave has a peak voltage of 12 volts. So that's the maximum voltage. And let's say we're using a germanium diode. 
with a voltage drop of 0.3 volts. So 12 minus 0.3, that means that the maximum voltage across C1 will be 11.7. It's 12 minus the voltage drop of the diode. So now that C1 has been charged, let's see what's going to happen during the positive half cycle of the sine wave. So during the positive half cycle, the polarity across the 12 volt AC sine wave is going to change. The positive side will now be at the top and the negative sign will be at the bottom. So notice the polarities of the AC signal and C1, positive to negative. So like those two batteries in series, the voltages are now additive. So let's call this ground. Let's say this is at zero. This will now be at 12. And at this point, the potential will be 12 plus 11.7, which means it's going to be 23.7 volts. So that's the sum of the voltages of the AC power source and C1 during the positive half cycle. So now let's talk about the direction of the current at this point. So current is going to flow away from the positive terminal and current will also flow from C1 as well away from its positive terminal. It won't be able to flow through D1 because D1 is in reverse bias mode so that diode is off. Now it will flow through D2 so D2 is on and that's going to give us a voltage drop of 0.3 volts. So this is at 0, this is at 23.7 this will now be at 23.4. And then current is going to flow through C2, charging it. So C2 charges during the positive half cycle of the sine wave. And it's going to charge to a potential of 23.4 volts. Now some of the current will flow through the load resistor. But the load resistor has to have a high resistance such that it doesn't quickly discharge C2. So you want to have... You want to make sure that C2, its capacitance, it's high enough such that the RC constant with C2 and the load resistor, it doesn't quickly discharge C2. If RL is too low, this voltage may not be sustained. But if RL is high, where the rate at which the circuit charges C2 is greater than the rate at which C2 discharges through RL, then this voltage will be maintained at 23.4. So you, you need to make sure that you use the right capacitance value based on the load resistance of the external circuit so that C2 can maintain its voltage at 23.4. If you find that the voltage is not being maintained at 23.4, just increase the capacitance of C2 until it is. And also make sure you choose a capacitor with the appropriate maximum voltage rating. You don't want to use a 16 volt electrolytic capacitor for C2 because it's going to be damaged by the high potential across it. So you may want to use a 48 volt capacitor or a capacitor that can handle 100 volts, something that's higher than 23.4. So you need to make sure you choose the appropriate elements. So now that C2 has been charged to 23.4 volts, that energy is now stored in the capacitor. D2 will prevent C2 from discharging back into the circuit because it will be in reverse bias mode. So C2 can only discharge through the load resistor. And so that's how this circuit works. That's how the voltage can be increased. So for this particular example, we had an input voltage of 12 volts of alternating current. And we now have an, an output voltage of 23.4 volts DC. So the output voltage is equal to twice the peak voltage minus two times the voltage drop of the diodes, assuming that they have the same voltage drop. So that's how the half wave voltage doubler circuit works. Now let's talk about the signal at the output. So let me just take a minute and delete a few things. So at the input, we have a sine wave. 
at 12 volts. And at the output, we're going to have a DC signal at 23.4 volts. But it's not a perfect straight line. We're going to have a ripple voltage. So it's going to go up and down because the capacitor is being charged and discharged slightly. Now, the amount of ripple voltage depends on the capacitance of C2 and the amount of current that the external circuit draws from C2, which can be controlled by the load of resistance. So to decrease the ripple voltage, what you can do is increase the capacitance of C2, or you can increase the resistance of the, you can increase the load resistance of the external circuit so that less current is drawn from C2. So those are some factors in which you can reduce the ripple voltage so that you can get a smooth output DC voltage. And that's basically it for this particular circuit.